What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna be doing a pretty simple cocktail called a Mad Hatter. It was uh, first published by Ted Saucier in his book Bottoms Up in 1951. And I am assuming that this is a reference to Alice in Wonderland, the book published by Lewis Carroll in 1865. And what's kind of crazy is that this book was actually published in the same year that the Disney film Alice in Wonderland uh, was released, 1951, um, which I thought was pretty interesting. So maybe this book was published first or maybe not. Um, evident. According to Wikipedia, this is where I'm trying to, this is what me and Marius are trying to puzzle out. According to Wikipedia, Lewis Carroll never actually referred to the Mad Hatter as the Mad Hatter in um, Alice in Wonderland. He referred to the Hatter as the Hatter, and the Cheshire Cat calls him mad. So if this was created in 1951, and the movie was also released in 1951, uh, was Ted Saucier able to see this um, movie? Did he, well, maybe, first of all, did he create this cocktail? And then if so, did he see the movie before he published the book? I don't know if that's possible. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say that it is a reference to Alice in Wonderland because, uh, you know, that's fun. So I decided that usually this is done in a coupe. And usually I like to say, well, I want, I like you guys to see the color of the drinks, but you have seen enough yellow drinks in a coupe probably to fill your life. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do it in a teacup. So Mar Marius keeps on wanting to talk. What do you want? What do you want to do? The, you said there was like 11. No, you didn't say, but you said before we started the video, there's like 11 versions before the Disney version. Oh yeah. Right? That's the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting was that even though the Disney version was the most popular version of Alice in Wonderland and why, and one of the great classics that Disney created, uh, there were 11 versions, there are 11 adaptations of Alice in Wonderland um, before the Disney one came out, which I just thought was really interesting because I think a lot of people think that the inception of Alice in Wonderland in popular culture was Disney, but that is just not true. There was a whole bunch of different versions uh, from a lot, from different countries. I mean, uh, Lewis Carroll was a an English author, and um, and uh, and a lot of those adaptations were from the BBC, like like back in the day. They were silent films. There was Alice in Wonderland silent films as well. All right, let's get into making the drinks. So we're going to be very simple. First thing we're going to do is take our atomizer. And we are going to give a nice coat of absinthe to the inside of our glass, or in this case, uh, tea saucer. Putting the mad in the mad hatter. I'm going to add my big rock of ice. That would be nice. Take a. I'm going to take a. We're going to take a, a page from the dead rabbit and put a nice big rock of ice inside there. Uh, and then we're going to create. We're going to not create the drink because it's already been created. But we are going to create it in this tin. All right. So first thing we're going to do is three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. And then we are going to do three-eighths of an ounce of lemon juice, three-eighths of an ounce of lime juice, and then we're just going to do two ounces of rye. I chose to use bonded rye in this particular instance, but you can use 80 proof if you want. I just thought the bonded would be really nice with the uh, absinthe rinse. So we do two ounces, put our cap and bag on, add some ice to our tin. Give it a nice shake. Now, you'll see that I don't have a fine strainer here and I just don't really think that it's that important to fine strain this particular cocktail uh, because uh, we can close the gate here and get most of those ice chips out and uh, I actually don't mind the extra dilution in something like this since we're putting on a big rock of ice anyway. Uh, and then what we're going to do, well, I guess we're going to go into the drawer and get more nutmeg. That happens like two out of three times. No, it happened one day. It happened twice. And then ever and since the then, time. ever since then, um, ever since then, you think it happens every time. And that no, time I, and, and usually, no, no. usually it happens when I'm zesting and it falls. But I actually just dropped that one there, so. I, I said know. it happens two out of three times, and you said it happened twice, and then you did it again. So. But it's yeah. only happened two separate occasions. It just happened twice on one occasion. So it's like, yeah, okay, fine. Technically, you're right, but you make it sound as if I do it every time I pick up a piece that of nutmeg. Was, yeah, that's what I was trying to do. But yeah, exactly. I know that's what you're trying to do, but it's not true. It's, you know well, what it is? It is true. It's a distortion is what it is. <laughs> but it is it's true. A, it's a complete distortion. All right, I'm going to zest the nutmeg. All right. 
I just, you know, I just want everyone to see what's going on right here, okay? Because all of you guys, here's the thing, all of you guys think that I am so mean to Marius, everyone's like, don't talk to Marius that way. I would never talk to Marius that way. If, you, if I were Marius, I would box your ears. But you know what? I gotta tell you that Marius gives it right back. He gives it right back. But am I speaking truth or not? Was it true? No, it's a distortion. It's not true. It's not wholly true. You're messing with the percentages. <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> it's not true, no. It's not true at all. Okay, we'll see. All right, I'm going to take a sip of this cocktail because it's going to make me feel less angry. <laughs> do you think... Uh, oh, I can do this later, but... Um, do you think it's called the Mad Hatter because it's got absinthe in it? No, I think that there's absinthe in it because they wanted to... I think that the idea of making a drink about the Mad Hatter came first. And they were like, what would the Mad Hatter drink? And then they were like, absinthe des definitely has to be in it. Especially since... You know, given absinthe's history, I think, yeah, that absinthe would definitely have to be in it, seeing as there was a reputation that it would make you go mad. Mm. I gotta tell you, I mean, like, I, I wanna say, like, everyone's gonna say, well, that's just a rum, a gin sour. And not a gin sour. I, that's not gin. You're gonna say, that's just a rye sour. That's just, and that's true. Simple syrup. Uh, lemon juice, lime juice, right? There you go. That's your sour. And then you got your rye and then you, but the absinthe really gives it a lot of complexity. It's very nice. I'm really digging the uh, nutmeg on top of it. Uh, and then on top of that, just to wrap it all together, uh, the lemon and the lime, like when you combine them, you get this really nice complex kind of citrusy flavor. The lemon being a little sweeter, the rye being a lot sharper. Both being sharp in their own right, it kind of gives it complexity, a nice complexity in that kind of citrus pop that you get. Yes. Ooh, that's, that's, that's good. And I really like the rye. The rye with the absinthe uh, and the sour is just like phenomenal. So there you have it, my friends. The Mad Hatter, Hatter from Ted Saucier. Bottoms up, 1951. Uh, go find the book. Go find the reprint and, and buy it. Or, or press the link below and you can buy it there. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, I don't know. What else? Do we got anything else to say, Marius? You got any other tidbits? Is it just me or is it weird? Does it feel strange to drink something cold out of a coffee cup? No, I think not really. Yeah. I mean, I guess like... You kind of expect it no, to be hot. No, it's not a coffee or... cup though. It's, oh, first uh, of all, it's a teacup. Tea and secondly, tea like when people did punches, they would do that. And usually punch doesn't have ice content, but it doesn't matter because it's cold. Mm -hmm. It's sitting on ice, you know? Just I kind of wish, you, you know, honestly, I think for that, for the thumbnail, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I want to give it like a, what do you guys think? If I just give it like a little uh, dehydrated lime, lemon? Mm -hmm. Is that even visible? Kind of. Should I like pin it to there? Just put it in there, yeah. It's, Is that nice though? I don't know if that's yeah. nice. It's a very English thing to do. Isn't it? Well, it should have like a, you know, it's got lemon, it's got lime. We've got some dehydrated lemon wheel. Why not? Yeah, that'd be nice. All right, guys. Well. See you on another time. I don't know. I'm going to figure this out for the thumbnail. And you guys will see it. But there you have it. Oh, oh yeah. Well, let's do a couple more things. Uh, if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe. Uh, press the bell icon if you want notifications for when we release videos. Uh, it helps us out greatly. And then if you want to check us out on Patreon, we've got a bunch of cool exclusive things going on on Patreon that you can only check out on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Educated Barfly. Go check out some of the posts there. Check out some stuff that we're doing. We have a whole bunch of different tiers for different levels of uh, support. And then on top of that, we're going to do another bigger tier of support for people who want to help us build a new set because we have to leave this set. I was informed that we have a shelf life where we're at now. So our set is going to change and we are going to build it and customize it. And we have a very cool perk for people who do that. Uh, we're only asking for people to sub one month at a specific amount of money. Uh, you get one perk for it, and it would be really, really cool. So uh, go check it out, patreon.com slash the educated barfly. Uh, if you want to check out all the awesome gear that we use, a lot of people ask me, like, where did you get the gear? Where did you get the gear? Uh, I usually link it below. It's always linked below, but it's Barfly Mixology gear. It's the gear that we use. It's really nice, high-quality bar gear. And uh, uh, that being said, you can check out uh, our affiliate links in the description. If you use our affiliate links, I usually link every single uh, piece of equipment. And then I also link the store's, uh, the store's uh, address as well. So you can go just see the general store or you can go get specific pieces of equipment. Uh, and it helps us out because we get a little kickback from Amazon when you do that. It's not a huge kick out, a kickback, but the more you guys uh, get your gear through us, the more of a kickback we get. 
the easier it is for us to create the show. And then if you guys want to go get an apron, go to staggerlygoods.com and type in barfly SLG20 at checkout. You'll get 20% off your order. Uh, and then Surfside Sips, last one. Surfside Sips, what we've been using on this channel a lot. They make high impact glass straws. We really love them. We support them wholly. And we have a two discount codes there, either Barfly or Barfly20 at checkout. We'll get you both. Either one or both will get you 20% at checkout. So uh, do that. Live long and prosper. Nanu Nanu.